Hello YouTube, Joe Kiger here, and today I want to discuss my top 10 film scores. These are going to be my 10 personal favorite movie soundtracks, and with it being my personal favorites, you may see some entries that you don't really expect to see or particularly agree with, but that's just because a lot of my favorite film soundtracks I feel do not get enough recognition for the praise that they're due. So with that being said, please be prepared to see some very random and maybe obscure entries that you don't expect to see with this list. Now before we get into the top 10, there are some film scores I would like to cover that I think deserve an honorable mention. These are film scores that I think are fantastic and I do love them, but they just barely could not crack the list for one reason or another. And instead of talking at length for each of these entries like I could, I'm just going to list them off pretty quickly because I'm afraid this video is going to be too long with all the stuff I want to talk about in my top 10, but my picks for honorable mentions of the best film scores of all time are Batman, The Curse of the Black Pearl, The Incredibles, Avengers Endgame, Toy Story 3, Chicken Run, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, and Ant-Man. Again, I really do love these soundtracks and think they're superb, but I think that there are 10 that are just better than those, just barely, but with that out of the way, we can start the list, and I need to preface this by saying I only picked one movie per franchise. So if I was doing like a totally honest top 10, I would probably have multiple movies from the same franchise in the top 10 repeated. However, I didn't want to be redundant with this video, so I only chose one movie per big franchise, and you'll see that there's a lot of those. But with that out of the way, we can get started with number 10. Starting off at number 10, we have an entry from a franchise that has some of the most highly regarded and popular film music of all time, Star Wars. Although John Williams has gifted us with nine incredible soundtracks with each main installment in the series, I have to say his best work is Revenge of the Sith, and that is my number 10 pick for best score of all time. Throughout the whole Star Wars series, tensions were at their absolute highest with Revenge of the Sith, and John Williams clearly understood that and he managed to perfectly capture the weight of Anakin turning to the dark side and Palpatine starting his new empire in his music. Not only did he give us great original new tracks with Revenge of the Sith, but he also provided some of my favorite variations of his older themes that he has already introduced, like the Force theme that's featured in the main titles. <laughs> The Imperial March that's featured in Anakin vs. Obi-Wan. There's also some really powerful haunting music in tracks like Anakin's Dark Deeds. And the immolation scene. capture the weight of everything like I was talking about and he keeps the scope of Star Wars and the overall feel of the soundtrack intact the whole time while giving us some of the coolest and most intense music throughout the whole series and that gives Revenge of the Sith the title of best Star Wars soundtrack in my opinion. Coming in at number nine is one of the best films of the 2010s in my opinion and that is La La Land. La La Land is a film with grand scale and Justin Hurwitz managed to portray that perfectly in his score for the movie. Although this movie is mostly known for its original song sung by Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling, there are also some really phenomenal instrumental compositions that I think go a little bit more unnoticed but just as much deserving of the praise that the songs get. We have music that ranges from loud and jazzy to quiet and beautiful depending on the situation. The tone is matched perfectly throughout the movie, and I think the standouts, as far as the soundtrack goes, in my opinion, are me and Sebastian's theme, Summer Montage, and my personal favorite, Planetarium. Although Justin Hurwitz has crafted a number of great scores in his career at this point, I think La La Land is his best work and that's why it's number 9. Following the musical La La Land, coming in at number 8 we have another musical 
Beauty and the Beast. I would argue that this is the best original score made for a classic Disney film out of all the films that came out in Disney's golden age of animation in the 80s and 90s. Alan Menken did a superb job of matching each high and low of the story with his music while also giving us some wonderful, iconic melodies. I find myself coming back to this soundtrack time and time again because of how dynamic it is and how catchy the themes are. Some of my favorite from the soundtrack are the roller coaster that is West Wing. The somber beauty that is the Beast Let's Spell Go. The frightening intensity of Battle on the Tower. Of course, the grand finale, Transformation. All these tracks contribute to an outstanding soundtrack by Alan Menken. So far with the first three entries on this list, you're probably thinking, Joe, this list isn't very outlandish, this just makes sense. These are soundtracks we would come to expect on a list like this. But all that's about to change right now. Legend Danny Elfman composed a very overlooked yet strong soundtrack in a movie that I would consider very overlooked yet strong. And the number seven spot goes to Real Steel. With this movie being a very uplifting, heartwarming story, the soundtrack is also very uplifting and that's what I love about it. There's a lot of great inspirational music that can pump you up at times and then make you feel deeply moved at others. The whole score just has a very wholesome vibe to it and there's a great main theme repeated throughout the movie that represents the triumph of our main characters, Charlie, Adam, and Max. The best pieces of music from the score, in my opinion, are Charlie Trains Adam, <laughs> Twin Cities intro, best one being Final Round. For the sixth best film soundtrack of all time, I chose The Dark Knight composed by Hans Zimmer. I have to admit that since I only allowed myself one movie per franchise with the top 10, I really struggled between 1989's Batman Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. You probably noticed that I put Batman 1989 in the honorable mentions because I love it so much. But I think The Dark Knight has a slight edge above both of those movies. Although a lot of the themes were introduced in Batman Begins, I think Hans Zimmer does an even better job in The Dark Knight with expanding them and giving us more of what their potential could have been. I just think Hans Zimmer was able to utilize the old themes more effectively with The Dark Knight. And I also think he gave us some of the best music from Batman we've ever gotten with tracks like Like a Dog Chasing Cars. Harvey Two-Face. I would consider one of the best film composition tracks of all time, A Watchful Guardian. I also feel the need to shout out the track, Watch the World Burn from the Dark Knight. one of the most devastating and tragic things you could ever listen to, but I still just love it so much. My brother Sam actually described it as, quote, just evil. But I still love it and definitely think you should check that out. And overall, The Dark Knight is just a brilliantly powerful score. 
John Williams makes his second appearance on this list as we enter the top five film scores of all time with Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Similar to Revenge of the Sith, John Williams had already crafted really iconic and wonderful music for Harry Potter in the first two movies that came before Prisoner of Azkaban, but this one just brought so much originality and new life to Harry Potter, and because of that, I think this movie barely exceeds the first two films in the soundtrack department. The music here is just so distinctly different from the first two movies, and even the movies that come after Prisoner of Azkaban, but it's not just different, it's better and it gave us the pinnacle of Harry Potter music with tracks like Window to the Past, and Buckbeak's Flight. And it also gave us the best instances of Quidditch music we've ever heard. movie credits that we get in Harry Potter. Prisoner of Azkaban also has my favorite track in the entire Harry Potter series, which is Finale. And fun fact, Finale was my most played song in 2017 for Spotify Rap. So that, along with a lot of the other stuff that's featured in Prisoner of Azkaban, is the reason why it's coming in at number five on my list. Number four brings us the last entry of something you might have a slight chance of expecting on this list. The next three are gonna get kinda wild, but just bear with me through it. But anyway, number four comes from the talented composer Ludwig Jorensen, who's actually pretty young and it is his very impressive first big soundtrack he ever did, Creed. Joranson created one of the most motivational and hype soundtracks ever with Creed. He honored the essence of Rocky's iconic music and even directly referenced it a lot of times in the soundtrack. But he also gave us something so fresh and cool with Creed's music and infuse it with a lot of hip-hop sounds like trap beats and different 808s. That really enhance the music and give it more energy. I dare say that with all this, Creed's music is even better than Rocky's. And Creed is also a better film than Rocky. Don't at me. But yes, this music is incredibly high energy and extremely motivational. It makes me feel like I can beat up anyone in the world, which is obviously not true, but that just shows the power behind the music. Not to mention, there's a lot of slower music that's really pretty and depicts the struggles and connections between characters really, really well. I just think this is truly one of the best film soundtracks ever composed and you should definitely check out Creed if you don't understand the hype behind it. We've now reached my top three picks for best film scores and I need to preface them by saying I did not choose these just to look different or, or be unique. I'm not trying to just stand out in the crowd. I just genuinely think these are the best film soundtracks ever. They are my personal favorites and contain not just some of the best film music I've ever heard, but what I would consider to be just the best music in general I've ever heard. So again, I'm not trying to be special. I'm not trying to be unique with these picks. The fact that they are overlooked does not play a part in me choosing them. These are just genuinely what I would consider the best of the best, and that's why they're in my top three. With that now out of the way, let me give you one of the hottest takes of all time. Hans Zimmer's best soundtrack is not Gladiator. It's not Inception, it's not Dune, it's not The Lion King, and it's not even Interstellar. In my totally accurate and objective, universally true opinion, the best Hans Zimmer soundtrack is... 
The Lone Ranger. That's right, folks. The best Hans Zimmer soundtrack is one that probably not a single soul agrees with me on. But what can I say? I love this soundtrack. I love the many different themes Zimmer introduces and then reuses throughout the film. I like that it's just a full package of chaotic, beautiful, upbeat, and awe-inspiring music. just gives you the range of every emotion that you could want from a film soundtrack and the melodies are so good in it. Hans Zimmer also uses great instrumentation in the movie to give you the sense that you're in the Wild West in the 19th century and I find that so cool. One example of Hans Zimmer's great utilization of instrumentation in this film comes from his usage of his percussion and making it sound like train tracks going. He manages to make the rhythm sound like what you're watching on screen as trains are going and they're going rapidly and that's exactly what the percussion sounds like and I just find that so awesome. There's so much variety in the soundtrack and all the different themes are so impressive to me and just sound great. And in addition to all of this, Hans Zimmer composed one of the coolest renditions of any classical piece of music ever with his track finale, William Tell Overture. <laughs> So I know I sound crazy when I say that The Lone Ranger belongs in the top three film soundtracks of all time, but I promise you that if you listen to it, you will find that there is some undeniable greatness to it, if nothing else. My pick for the second best film score of all time is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. This soundtrack pushed Michael Giacchino from being a great composer in my eyes to being my favorite composer of all time. What he was able to accomplish with his score in Dawn still baffles me to this day. He pays brilliant tribute to the original music of the first Planet of the Apes with sporadic sounds and random beats and notes played by odd sounding instruments. perfectly captures the unnerving feeling of fear that is so present in the movie and the uncertainty of the ape's behavior. In the midst of this though, G. Kino manages to blend in a number of really, really strong themes that give us narrative cues to associate with bigger emotional beats in the film or character themes and things like that. The themes are what draw me to the score again and again. And that can pretty much be said for about any film soundtrack I listen to. I like hearing the themes and the melodies that are played. However, Michael Giacchino makes an exception here because while I normally don't like to listen to filler music that just builds tension or sets a mood in movies, he manages to captivate me even with his mood setting music, especially during scenes that have rising action like the apes attacking the humans. That's a huge feat for a composer to be able to keep me listening even when there's not really a distinct melody being played it's just tension building and i still love it few compositions i have heard evoke the exact feelings that a director desires the audience to have as flawlessly as giacchino's score for dawn does and when you mix in some really beautiful intense frightening and moving themes of all that, you get one of the best soundtracks of all time. 
Not to mention, this movie has some of the best closing music I have ever heard. And leads you straight into one of the most powerful end credits compositions that's ever been made. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, my number one film score of all time. I can't imagine any of you would have any chance of guessing what this is going to be, unless you have seen the first video I uploaded to this channel. That's kind of a clear giveaway, but it is without a hint of sarcasm or irony that I tell you the best film score of all time is Christopher Young's Spider-Man 3. To put things into perspective on how much I love this soundtrack, and how it is so clear to me that it is my all-time favorite. I have eight tracks saved from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which again, that's my second favorite film score of all time. But for Spider-Man 3, I literally have double that amount, and I have 16 tracks saved from the movie on a playlist that I go back and listen to all the time. I truly just don't know where to begin with Christopher Young's composition in this movie. There are just so many great tracks and themes used throughout the movie from beginning to the closing credits. You have The Birth of Sandman, which is one of the most beautifully heartbreaking themes ever written. Then you have the symbiote theme, which is super dark and dynamic, and so popular and iconic that it literally became a meme. And then you also have music like the sinister theme of Venom, which is just so cool and eerie. And that's just scratching the surface of the greatness of this composition. But in between all these iconic character themes, there are some brilliant tracks that can be found in different moments throughout the movie, like fight scenes. big emotional moments. And even smaller, more intimate moments between characters. While Christopher Young does draw a lot on the music of the first two movies, composed by Danny Elfman, and as much as it pains me for Danny's sake to say this, Young elevates the music from the first two movies and provides original themes that I would consider the best in the series. There are two tracks from the movie in particular that I would genuinely say are in my top five pieces of music ever written or composed or performed. And these are the tracks that play when Peter goes to the church tower, and when Flint Marco confesses his guilt in Uncle Ben's death. There have been countless times that I've been in a totally neutral mood listening to these tracks and I will literally just start crying because of how moving they are to me. This soundtrack also has a very dear place in my heart as it was one of the first film compositions I ever listened to and was crucial for developing my love for film scores. There's just something in almost all of the themes that resonates with me so deeply and helps make Spider-Man 3 far and away my all-time favorite film score. Trust me when I say I could say so much more about the music of Spider-Man 3 and all the tracks I like and the reasons that I love them, but I think this video has taken too long at this point. So we're gonna head to the outro but if you want to see some of the more specific reasons I like the soundtrack and choices that I appreciate that Christopher Young made with it, please watch the first video on my channel where I talk about that specifically. Well, folks, that wraps up my top 10 film scores of all time. 
It's definitely been a wild ride, but we made it through. And now I want to know your all's thoughts. What are your favorite movie scores? What do you think of my list? What do you agree with or disagree with that was on my list? Please leave your opinions below. I'd love to hear them. And thank you all so much for watching. This project has been one that has been a long time coming, but it's been a blast to make and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So thanks again for watching and leave some ideas for future videos you want to see. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.